Greetings. Good evening to everyone who's joining. Greetings to all of you who are joining. This is Bethel Campus Fellowship, BCF, the Periscope series. Greetings. Go ahead and share the link. Pass it on on social media. Share the link on your group me. Share it on Twitter, on Instagram, Snapchat. Share it on your Facebook. Thank you so much for inviting followers. Welcome to everyone who's joining us tonight for the BCF Bethel Campus Fellowship Periscope. This is the BCF Periscope series called Checkup. Go ahead and share the link with all your friends, your followers. Share it on social media. Tonight is a night where you're going to be blessed tonight. Any person that's able and accessible to this Periscope series is going to be blessed. So go ahead and share the video. Share the link with all of your followers. Post it on your group meets. Post it on social media. Welcome to all of you who have joined us far. Thank you so much. God bless you for sharing the link. People are going to be blessed tonight by the word of the Lord. This is the BCF Late Night Summertime Periscope Series titled Checkup. And you don't want to miss tonight's topic. Hallelujah. We have four awesome days this week of this particular topic. And you're going to be blessed. So go ahead and share with others. You don't want them to miss out what God wants to speak to them through the word of God tonight. Amen. So go ahead and share it with your followers. We're going to get started very momentarily. If you're here with us live on Periscope and you're excited for tonight's teaching, go ahead and say amen and put a bunch of exclamation points after it. And go ahead and keep sharing this link with your friends. Invite some more people to come and be blessed. Awesome. Bethel Campus Fellowship, if this is your first time being a part of our Periscope and you're not familiar with BCF, Bethel Campus Fellowship is an interdenominational ministry for college students on college campuses and high school campuses. And the vision of this ministry is to lead students to Christ and prepare them to become reliable men and women that God can entrust with his word for the next generation. So our vision is very clear. The purpose for which we do all activities and we do all things, including this Periscope series, is in alignment with the vision of leading students to Christ. You know, introducing college students and high school students to Jesus Christ, you know, to get them to say yes to Christ, that they may receive eternal life. And it doesn't just stop there. Our vision is such that we desire that men should be raised up to be servants of God who would lead other students to Christ, snatching them out of the fire, as the Bible says in Jude chapter 1, verse 23. So if you believe that students need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, that students need to be born again, college students, high school students, go ahead and share this link. If you know that uh, there's a high school student or a college student who's born again that needs some encouragement, send them this link and say, hey, this is going to encourage you. This may help you with exactly what you're going through. I believe God wants to speak to somebody in a very relevant way tonight about their current situation because God speaks words in season. He does, when God speaks, right, He doesn't. he's not ignorant to the audience that he is speaking to. Amen. God is not ignorant to the audience that he is speaking to. And so he speaks with relevance. He speaks with conviction. Amen. Thank you guys for sharing the link. We're going to get started just momentarily. We'll give it a few more minutes. Praise the Lord. Awesome. If you were if you participated in the three days of prayer and fasting that we just had last week, as we were praying for the souls of college students, we were praying for the ministry of BCF. Go ahead and just and post a thumbs up emoji if you participated in that prayer and fasting. Amen. Bethel Campus Fellowship, we just concluded our three days prayer and fasting as we sought the Lord's face for the, 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 the salvation of college students all across America. Amen. God bless you all. I pray that the Lord spoke to you. Uh, throughout the time of prayer and fasting. I know the Lord gave me some revelations and spoke to me personally throughout the time of prayer and fasting and, and really spoke to me concerning the ministry of BCF. Amen. Tonight's series is a continuation of the, the series we're doing this summer, which is called Checkup. Amen. Tonight's series is a part of the, the series we're doing, which is called Checkup. And this t topic that we are focusing on tonight is called distractions. Amen. Somebody say distractions. And the purpose of this series that, you know, called checkup is to highlight some key topics or some key areas that can be of great detriment to the spiritual life, right, of a believer. So last week we talked about what? We talked about stagnancy, right? 
as a form of checkup. And, and really, this series is really to do a self-examination, you know, for the believer to really examine yourself to see if you are, you know, being entangled and being trapped by one of these areas of great detriment that really challenge the believers today, that can challenge any Christian, whether it's your pastor, whether it's a, a, the greatest man of God. All of these are areas, these are ensnarements that can actually hinder the effectiveness of God's work in your life if we ourselves are not careful of these things. And so, brethren, tonight is a, a, a topic where self-introspection, self-reflection is going to be necessary for us to get the benefit out of God's word. Oftentimes we fall into pitfalls when we hear the word of God, but we all automatically assume that it doesn't apply to us. But tonight and through this series called Checkup, it's not the time for us to come and say, well, that doesn't apply to me. That was a good word. It sounded so good. Let me share it and give it to my friend. No, tonight and from henceforth is a time for you to hear the word of God and to allow the word of God to examine your spirit, to examine the external circumstances around your life, to really see if you yourself are, are in detriment or in danger of these topics that we are talking about. And brethren, I tell you the truth that there is no shame that if you find out through these series that, hey, you know, there's an aspect of my life that maybe I've been distracted, maybe I've been stagnant. You know, God himself is not the one who came to condemn us, but he actually sends his word that we may be set free, that we may be liberated and empowered to do his will, to be in right standing with him. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to pray tonight. I'm going to get started, but go ahead. If you haven't already shared the link, go ahead and share with others. Post it on your Facebook, post it on your Instagram, share it on your Twitter, your Snapchat, whatever you like to do, your Tumblr, whatever you, your, your, your forum is. If it's GroupMe, go ahead and post it on every GroupMe. Tell them that tonight somebody is going to be uh, convicted of their sin, convicted of righteousness, and convicted of judgment. And brethren, the Bible says that that is what the Holy Spirit does. Whenever the word of God comes forth, there's conviction, there's freedom, there's liberation, there's restoration to the soul. I'm, I know so many times I've been convicted by the word of God and it has just set me free. It has brought me into a place of refreshment, into a place of encouragement, into a place of liberation, into a place where I didn't know that there was an issue with my relationship with God. But when the word of God confronted my heart, I began to see more clearly and I entered into a more peaceful place, a more free place in my relationship with Christ. Amen. So tonight is a night of liberation for some. It's a night of education for others. It's a night of encouragement and challenge for others as well. So tonight we're going to pray as the ministry of Bethel Campus Fellowship. Thank you all who have been able to share the link. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, and we magnify you. We thank you because today your word is going to be exalted. Tonight, God, at the appointed time, Lord, you have allowed us to come to hear the word. We pray, God, that as we talk about distractions, God, Lord, the things that can easily beset us in our relationship with God, Lord, would you liberate some tonight? Lord, would you challenge some tonight? Would you encourage some? Would you set others free, God? As many as have a different need, Lord, meet us at a point of need according to your word, God, and your ability, sovereign Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you all for joining us. Again, this is Bethel Campus Fellowship, if this is your first time joining. And uh, we're going to get started. Tonight, our series is in a continuation of Checkup. And tonight, we're talking about distractions, right? Again, this series is going to pose some different topics that really are challenging to the believers and can really be of great detriment if not really checked out and examine throughout your walk with God. So again, last week we talked about it. We talked about stagnancy and how there's a great danger, you know, of, of being stagnant in your relationship with the Lord, of being complacent in your relationship with God. And that danger was uh, thoroughly examined by one of the brothers who taught last week. And tonight and this tonight and the next three days, we're going to be examining distractions. Amen. So what does it mean to be distracted? Distraction is when your attention and your focus is being deviated from what God himself is focused on. Amen. How would a person know they're distracted? What is the definition of being distracted? Distractions or being distracted is when your attention, your focus has been deviated from what God himself is focusing on and you have now put your focus and your emphasis on something else that God is not focused on himself. And brethren, this is the challenge 
of our of our Christian walk. This is the difficulty of walking with the Lord because there are many distractions or many things that will arise in our lives that will want to distract us and take our attention off of what God is focusing on and put our attention on something else. In fact, distractions even come in the form of making you emphasize something that God himself is not emphasizing, though he himself has put it in place. Distractions come in such the form that you are emphasizing something that God himself isn't emphasizing in your life. Right. And God has said, you know, your focus should be here. So you have magnified something that God has deemed as small and you are making something small bigger than what it is. And it's causing you to actually be distracted. So we're going to dive into that. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 6, verse 24 to 34, okay? And without further ado, we're going to get right into the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So Matthew chapter 6. Amen. Tonight, we're going to talk about signs and symptoms, and I'm going to breeze through this very quickly. We're going to go through a couple of scriptures, but I'm really going to hit on some signs and symptoms, some key indicators that would indicate a person is distracted in their relationship with God. And you want to take some notes tonight because these are going to be some very key things that you will be able to use to examine your life critically and objectively to understand if you are distracted. Amen. So Matthew chapter 6, verse 24 to 34, it says, No man can serve two masters, for he will either hate one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not this life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. For they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to a stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God clothes the grass that is of the field, which is today... And is tomorrow thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? Amen. Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows the things that you have need of. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own troubles. Amen. So, brethren, through that scripture, we, we can indicate several things, right, that, that often can be distractions to us in our relationship with the Lord, right? Some of the things addressed in the scripture, Matthew 24 Matthew 6, 24 to 34, some of the things that addressed was clothes and 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 uh, money and finances, all of these things. Right. But I want tonight to address three common areas of distractions in the life of a believer, three common areas. And this is particularly relevant oftentimes to people who are in the age of, you know, the college and high school age. Right. The, the young adults. I'm going to address three common areas of distractions that often deviate our focus from what God wants us to be focused on and put our attention on something else, right? If you're ready, if you're taking notes, you can write down these three areas and I'm gonna send some scriptures along with them so that we can dissect them as well. The first area of a distraction that is often, you know, uh, engaging the believer, that's often trying to take and compete for the attention of the believer, right, is relationships with the opposite sex, right? The area of relationships with the opposite sex has often become an area of great distraction for believers, right? Now, I'll, I'll share some scriptures after that. The second area of great distractions, I mean, this is something that really takes the focus and the attention of our hearts away from the Lord oftentimes, and it, it causes us to be distracted from God, right? What is that? Personal security and well-being, right? Right? Personal security and well-being, or another word for that is often money, right? And number three, another area that often takes away and distracts us from God 
is busyness or simply stuff that God himself did not ask us to do. Those are the three areas that I want to address tonight and for the next three days. Three areas that often cause us to be distracted. I'm going to review them again. Number one is relationships with the opposite sex. And the scriptures that we're going to look at, Judges chapter 14, verse four, chapter 14 to 16. Number two, area that distracts believers and takes our focus off of the Lord. Personal security and well-being or job and career or money. Right. Those are all one category. Oftentimes, our personal well-being is something that distracts us from the Lord. You know, it's, we take our attention off of serving God and doing what God wants us to do in order to secure our personal well-being or in order to secure our, our finances or in order to, 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 to excel in our job, in our career, you know, because we are afraid of our personal success and our personal well-being. So we take our attention off of the things of God and we place it more from a fearful standpoint. We place our attention on the things that we think is going to help take us and make us secure and safe. Amen. And the scripture for that is Matthew 23, Matthew 6, verse 24 to 34, which we just read. Number three thing that distracts us and takes our attention off of God is busyness. Just being so busy that you no longer have time to spend with the Lord. You no longer have time to do that what's important. You no longer have time to fellowship with the brethren. You no longer have time to serve in, your, in church. You no longer have time to just be in that quiet place with the Lord because so much of life is just over, over, overtaking you. You have been consumed by the busyness, the responsibilities of life. Amen. But brethren, I tell you that that God is the source of your life. And without God, you wouldn't even have a life to be living to be so busy with. But let me not get into uh, to preach the preaching yet, right? So number three, busyness. And a scripture for that we're going to look at is Luke chapter 10, verse 38 to 42. Okay? Amen. Amen. So again, I want to go over signs and symptoms of being distracted, right? Because there are so many things. And these three things that I've just listed, they are just basic things that can distract us and things I have seen and observed that are, are common distractions in the kingdom. But there are so many other things that can distract us like social media that can distract our attention and, and take our emphasis on what God himself has really emphasized. And what is it that God has emphasized, right? Matthew 6, 33, because distractions is when you take your focus off of off what God is emphasizing and you have emphasized something else. You have magnified and put your attention on something else. And now your attention is off of what God put his his focus on and his his attention on. Right. God's attention is this Matthew 6, 33. His attention is seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That is God's focus. The kingdom of God has a particular focus and oftentimes relationships with the opposite sex can be what takes our attention off of God's kingdom agenda. It can also be our personal success and our personal well-being, trying to make sure that it's well with us, trying to make sure that you have the nicest clothes, that you are you're doing well. You know, that that everything is going good for you, that, you know, you're 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 financially stable. That can be something that really takes our attention off of God's kingdom agenda. Right. And, and one of the other things is just busyness. We can find ourselves being busy with so many kinds of things, but that can also take our attention off of God. Amen. So I shared some scriptures and what I want to do really quickly before we go to those scriptures, I'm going to give a list of some signs that you can use that we can begin to take into consideration that will help us to know if we are really focused on what God is focused on or if we are in a place of distraction. Amen. So the first sign, hallelujah, the first sign is sin. The first sign that you are distracted by something in your relationship with God or you are distracted is sin. Sin, you know, begins to occur or to manifest in your life. Sin is coming out of whatever you are doing or whatever you are distracted by, right? That's one of the signs that you are distracted or that there is a distraction that has come into your life or the thing that you are focusing on right, is a distraction from what God wants, right? There is sin that is coming and being results, is resulting out of what you are doing. 
Okay, and let's look at Judges chapter 14 really quickly. Amen. Well, actually, let's go to Judges chapter 16. Amen. Amen. Judges chapter 16, verse number one. It says, now Samson went to Gaza and saw a harlot there. And he went into her. When the Gazrites were told Samson was, was uh, come here, they surrounded the place and lay in wait for him all the night at the gate of the city. They all were quiet, saying, in the morning when it is daylight, we will kill him. And Samson lay low till midnight. Then he arose and took hold of the doors of the gate of the city and the two gate posts, pulled them up, bars and all, put them on his shoulders and carried them to the top of the hill that faces Hebron. Afterward, it happened that he loved a wife in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. Now, brethren, I want you to follow the story of Samson. Our time tonight will not permit us to read the entire story. But just from chapter 16, if you read the first four voice verses, you see that in verse number one, Samson was distracted by a harlot, right? Issue number one, Samson was distracted by a harlot. But then you see he went from the harlot and now he was distracted by a name by a woman named Delilah. Right. And brethren, oftentimes uh, the relationships with the opposite sex can be something that distracts us. The Bible talks about how there is a time and place for everything. And one of the things the Bible also says, it says, do not awaken love before it's time in Song of Solomon 2 verse 7. But many times distractions come in the form uh, of us doing something out of God's timing. In fact, many relationships will spring up. Many interests and affections for the opposite sex will spring up untimely or uh, um at the wrong time, in a time where God is not asking you to focus on relationships or to even enter into a relationship, but many of us will find ourselves in relationships. And one of the indicators that you can know that you are being distracted by the relationship you're in is when God has not told you that it's time for you to be in a relationship. That's one of the signs to let you know that you're, you can be dist you're, you're being distracted by that relationship. Another sign, again, I said is 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 sin. Oftentimes, sexual perversion will begin to manifest out of that relationship because you know that it's an indication that you are distracted by it. It wasn't something that was God's will. Sin is, 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 is erupting and, and pouring out of that relationship. Sexual perversion, you know, uh, is coming out of that relationship. It's an indication that you are being distracted, right, by that relationship. Amen. Another sign and symptom that you're being distracted, right, is your time serving God is diminished. Your time to serve God, your availability to God is diminished. You're no longer, you know, able to serve God. You're so busy, you're so you're so consumed by different things and you no longer have time to serve God, right? Let's look at Luke chapter 10 verse 38. Amen. Luke chapter 10 verse 38. It says, "Now it happened as they went as they went, that they entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed Jesus into her house. And now and she had a sister called Mary who sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Now, but Martha was distracted with so much serving and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled by many things. But one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken from her. Brethren, if we see this scripture here, we see that it was evident this woman, Martha, was distracted. She was so busy that she didn't even have time to be able to hear the word of God, to learn from the word of God anymore. She was so busy serving in church that she no longer was able to receive the word of God into her spirit. She was so busy doing so many other things that she was no longer able to just learn and receive from the Lord. One of the signs... Another sign that that you are distracted, right? You can even be distracted in your servant. You can even be uh, you can even be distracted, right? In a place of serving God, right? This woman Martha was serving, and she thought she was serving Jesus, but what she was doing was actually a deviation from what God was emphasizing at that moment. And brethren, there are several things that I've already named that distract us, you know, and we put our emphasis on it when God is not emphasizing that in this season of our lives. 
whether it's relationships with the opposite sex, whether it's your personal security, whether it's your, your well-being, you know, you're worried about your finances. Oh, how am I going to pay, you know, for this? How am I going to get here? How am I going to do all of these things, right? It's taking your focus off of the Lord and you have lost your, your time to spend with God. Your time with the Lord has diminished. Your time serving God, you no longer are able to stand in the vineyard of the Lord serving the people of God because you have your own personal agenda that you have to take care of. You have to figure out what you're going to wear tomorrow. You have to figure out, you know, what job you're going to apply for. You're so busy. You're so consumed about your future. You're worried about your future. But in the present, you're no longer able to serve God who has your future in his hands. It's a sign of being distracted. Another sign of being distracted is that you're frequently absent in the place of fellowship. Frequent absence in the place of fellowship, right, is a great sign of being distracted. It's a major sign when you are consistently. The only thing you're consistent at doing is being absent in the place of fellowship. When the believers gather, when the saints are together at the prayer meetings, you're not there. When it's time for evangelism, you're not there. You're not even there at church on Sunday anymore. When you find that you are frequently absent from the place of fellowship, where the believers are congregating, when you find that you're absent from that place, you know that you are probably being distracted. It's a good sign, a major indication of being distracted. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24, it teaches us, and in verse 25, it teaches us not to forsake the gathering of the brethren. It says, he who does not gather scatters abroad. You see, the fact that you are not gathering, right, that you're not with the brethren, it shows that there is something more important. There's a reason that is more important for the reason which the brethren are gathering that is deviated and taking you away from the midst of the brethren. I'll say it again, right? Your frequent absence in the place of fellowship is an indication that you are probably distracted because there is something that's more important to you that is less important to those who are actually gathering. And the Bible makes it very clear. It says, he who does not gather scatters abroad. And so because the fact that you are not gathering with those who have found a common importance and a purpose in the things of God, it's evident that there is something that is being magnified in your life and your heart that's taking your attention off of the things of God. And brethren, this can happen to any of us. Amen. Another sign of being distracted, right? Again, these are signs and symptoms that you may be distracted in your relationship with God. A sign of being distracted is that you are, you know, you're being confronted by the brethren. You know, you're being, you know, people are coming to you and, and, and warning you and saying, hey, where have you been? They're saying, you know, they, they come to you with a, a message of correction. It can be an indication that God is really trying to get your attention, that you're not in the place where you're supposed to be. You know, oftentimes when, when, when the brethren come to correct us or to, to, to challenge us, you know, and to say, hey, what's going on with you? Oftentimes we get offended and we begin to think, oh, why is this person judging me? But brethren, the Bible made it clear in Galatians 6, chapter, ver, chapter 6, verse 1, right? You see, God has actually given the commandment to the brotherhood, to the, to the saints of God, for us to put each other in check. And so the fact that someone is coming to put you in check or to challenge what you are doing or to, to correct you is not an indication that people are becoming more religious. It may actually be very well that the, the scripture is being fulfilled through you. The scripture which says, if a brother is overtaken in fault, you who are spiritual, go and correct them. Go and restore them. You see, every time someone comes to challenge us or to confront us, maybe about the things we're focusing on in our lives, it's not an indication that the, the church is becoming too religious. It's actually an indication that God's word is being fulfilled because the Bible says in Matthew chapter 18 that we as brethren should confront one another when we see an issue in each other's lives. When we are concerned. So the fact that someone is coming to warn you or the brethren are confronting you, that people are texting you like, hey, you know, I'm kind of I'm worried. I haven't seen you in fellowship. It may very well be an indication that you are distracted. And so I, I encourage us to open our hearts and to not become offended because that in itself, that offense is another checkup series that's going to be done, another checkup topic. But if you get offended, it's an indication that you are probably distracted by something that God is not putting his attention on. Amen. Praise God. Another sign of being distracted is your disobedience to God's will, right? If you're being disobedient to God's will with what you are distracted by, it may be your job. Maybe you have, you know, uh, your, your job is asking you to, um, 
You know, you've been, you know, neglecting the fellowship of the brethren. You know, you're just so consumed by your work and all of those things, right? And you begin to see that you begin to be disobedient to God because you are so heavily focused on what you're focused on. You know, you begin to neglect your family. You begin to, you know, uh, you know, just become disobedient. God told you to go and speak to this person, but you say, oh, I don't have time. I got to submit this project or I have to do this, you know. It's leading you to disobedience. You know, your disobedience is, is a manifestation of your, your distraction, of your heart being so fixated on something that God is not focused on. Your disobedience to the will of God is a, is a sign, it's a, distra it's a sign that you are distracted by something God is not focused on. You know, God tells you, he speaks to you and says, hey, go and talk to this person. They're not doing too well. And you're like, oh, man, I, I'm, I'm just so busy. Oh, man, you know, I don't think I have time. You know, it's a sign that you may be distracted. And you, especially when you find that you are consistently making excuses and you're, you're consistently delaying what God is telling you to do. It's a great sign that you are distracted by something. Delaying on what God has instructed you and made very clear to you to do is a sign that you are being distracted by something. OK. Another sign is um, you don't have a clear word of, from God about the matter. Oftentimes, right, we, we just do things that God did not really lead us to do. John chapter 5, verse 17 to 20 says, I, I do what I see my father do and I say what I see him say, right? You see, many times we enter into, again, I'll go back to the three areas of, uh, of, of common distractions in, our, in, our, in the, the Christian dome, right? One being the area of relationships with the opposite sex, right? Oftentimes what happens is that you will find yourself in a casual relationship, in a relationship with someone. But now if the brethren come and ask you, well, how did you get into that relationship? You know, did the Lord lead you there? What did the Lord tell you about this relationship? And you will have no clear revelation about how, you know, God's leadership was the one that led you into the relationship. You just made a decision to just be in that relationship of your, of your own self, right? It can be a sign that you are distracted, you know, because God's guidance was not what led you there, but you found yourself there. Right. Oftentimes that can be a clear sign when you have no clear revelation, no clear direction from God about being in that relationship. It's an indication that you have probably been led astray. You see, the Bible says in, in Proverbs 14, it says there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is destruction. It says, there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is destruction. So one of the greatest signs that, that you are distracted is when God himself is not the one who initiated what you're involved in. You're a part of a club or an association. And I ask you, well, you know, how did God lead you to be a part of this? Or, you know, do you, wh who, when did God tell you? What did God tell you, you know, to, to let you know you should join this thing or to be a part of this? You know, or that you should work 40 hours a week and, or 60 hours a week and that you should miss church on Sundays. And you say, well, uh, I just felt you don't have you have no clear revelation or no clear inspiration about behind the decision that you have made. It's an often at times a sign that you have been distracted, that your attention has been deviated, because if your attention was not deviated, you would actually have a trace back to the word which God spoke to you for where you are and the decision that you made. Another sign and symptom, right, uh, of being distracted is that your thoughts are consumed by something and your time and your strength is also being consumed by that thing, right? Again, the area of relationships is so, is so uh, evident with this one, with this distraction, right? You know, you find yourself in your quiet time, you're trying to pray, you're trying to read, and this person is just on your mind. You can't even, you know, you're reading John 3, 16, for God so loved this girl, and oh, man, I wonder what she's doing right now. Um, man, you know, I wonder if she's on social media. Let me check my phone. Oh, yeah, God so loved the... Um, yeah, he gave his only, you know, you're in your quiet time and you can't even focus on God. Your mind is being consumed by this thing or even in the area of your personal security or your job. Right. You know, you, 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 you know, you will find yourself not even spending time with God anymore because you're so worried. You're so stressed. How am I going to, you know, put food on the table? How am I going to provide? How am I going to, you know, pay my tuition next semester? You're so worried. You're working two, five work study jobs. You know, you're, you're taking two credits because you're so worried that you can't even pay for the two credits that you have. And you're no longer serving God because you're so distracted about, you know, how are you going to provide? How is it going to happen? You know, you're so consumed. And so your mind is, is every five minutes. You're reading the Bible. You're praying. All you can think about is, 
How am I going to provide? How, how am I going to provide? How am I going to get the money? How am I going to, how is it going to happen? You're so, you're so concerned, right? And so that indication or that, that sign of being distracted is coming through the form of your mind is being consumed by the things that, that, that you're worried about. Your time and all of your effort, your strength is being poured out, you know, not in the place of being in the presence of God, but your time, your strength, your treasures, your talent is being poured out and you trying to, to take matters into your own hands, you know. You're being consumed by the by this relationship, by this person. We may not even be in a relationship. It may just be a person that is taking your attention and your heart off of the Lord, you know. And so oftentimes, one of the areas we can find out whether we're distracted or not is in our quiet time. What is consuming our attention? What is on your heart? You're reading the Bible. What is taking your attention? What is really on your mind? Are you reading and, and it's just going through one ear and out the other? You're reading the words on the page, but your heart and your emotions are somewhere else. You know, um, praise God. I'm going to uh, share the last two. OK, uh, another sign that you are you are distracted is. Um, you know, uh, when you have a bad impression on your conscience, you know, when it comes to a certain topic or a certain area, or maybe you're trying to avoid something when people bring up a certain topic, whether they bring up money and finances, you're so, you know, you try to avoid that topic. That can be a sign that you're distracted, right? And also being in the wrong place at the wrong time is a great sign of distraction. You know, uh, I, the last scripture I'll have us read before we kind of close out in prayer, tonight's uh, series Again, is checkup, and we're talking about distractions. These are signs and symptoms to let us know, you know, if we are distracted or if our focus is really on what God is focusing on. Amen. Hallelujah. So I want to turn to a scripture, and the scripture we will turn to is Second. Um, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second Samuel. Hallelujah. Do, 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 do. Amen. Looking for that scripture. Second, yeah, here it is. Okay, Second Samuel chapter eleven. Praise God. Second Samuel chapter eleven. Okay, and this is the distraction, right? You know, a, a sign and an indication that you are distracted is when you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, right? When you're not where you're supposed to be, it's a great sign that you are distracted. When the people of God are congregating and you are somewhere else, when the people of God are, you know, it's church service, it's prayer service, and you find yourself that you are, you know, you're, you're, you're doing something else, you know? Um, that is not a good sign, and it's a sign that you can be distracted. I'm not saying that it's that that it's a cold, hard, fast rule, but oftentimes, if you would use this to examine yourself, you will see that you may be distracted. So, Second Samuel 11, verse one, it says, "It happened in the spring of the year, at a time when kings go out to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him in all Israel." And they destroyed the people of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David remained at Jerusalem. Listen, brethren, it says at a time when kings go to war, it says that David was where? He was in Jerusalem. At a time when kings are supposed to be going to war, David is in Jerusalem. You see, the people of God are in one place, but you yourself are in another place. The Bible says at a time when kings go to war, David was where? He wasn't on the battlefield. He wasn't on the battleground. He himself was in Jerusalem at his house chilling. In a time where, where, where the saints of God are going to battle, the saints of God are going to do the things of God, you yourself are finding yourself in a different place where God's action is taking place. You are missing an action. It's a great sign of being distracted. And if you read the rest of 2 Samuel chapter 11, you will see even from verse number 2, it says, Then it happened one evening that David arose from his bed and walked on the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman bathing, and the woman was very beautiful to behold. 
Problem, red flag number two, red flag number two, David's distraction, the fact that he wasn't where he was supposed to be is now manifesting, right? Where he is seeing things that he shouldn't even be seeing, right? Sin is evolving, is erupting from his distraction, right? Now sin is coming forth because he is now beginning to watch a woman that she is bathing, which is also pornography, right? And verse number three, it says, so David sent and inquired about this woman. And someone said, is this not the, the Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah, the Hittite? Then David sent messengers and took her. We see sin is continuing to erupt. Again, one of the signs of being distracted is sin is manifesting out of that area of your life where you are distracted. Sin is coming forth. Sexual perversion is about to take place. Your sexual perversion is, in fact, already taking place inside of David's heart. And what did it start off with? It started off because he himself was in the wrong place at the wrong time. He himself, you know, was excluded from fellowship. He himself, you know, decided that, hey, there was a reason for me to not be where I needed to be. Amen. So, brethren, uh, with that, I'm going to conclude tonight's session. Hallelujah. But again, I'm going to list off some of the key uh, signs and symptoms of being distracted. OK. OK. Some of the signs and symptoms of being distracted is sin is coming out of that area. Whatever you are distracted by is producing sin inside of your life, whether it's a job, whether it's a relationship, whether it's, uh, you know, just other stuff that you're busy with. It's causing you to be disobedient to the Lord. It's causing it's some some kind of sin is coming out of it. You know, some kind of you see that some sin is associated with that you and that thing. You may be distracted by that thing if sin is coming, is, is spewing out of that area of your life, okay? Another sign of being distracted, your time to serve God is diminished. You're no longer able to serve God as much as you used to. You're no longer able to be, you know, and, and to do the things of God as much as you used to. It's a sign that something has taken your attention off of God. You're frequently absent in the place of fellowship. So when the believers are congregating, you're, you're just frequently not there. In fact, people are hitting you up like, yo, where have you been, man? Like, you know, people are confronting you. It's a sign of being distracted. When people, when the brethren confront you and are, you know, you find that there's a frequent uh, thing that's happening, it's a sign. It's not that people are, so, are judging you or being so religious. It's actually the fulfillment of God's word. Galatians 6, 1 says it, you know, when the brethren are overtaken in fault or when, you, when you're you concerned about the brethren, you re you're supposed to reach out to them. So the fact that people are reaching out to you is actually an indication that you may be distracted. Okay. Uh, you're, um, you're disobedient to God's will, right? If you find that something that you are doing is just in and of itself disobedient to God, then you're definitely distracted. Um, also, you don't have a clear word from God about the matter, but you're still entertaining it. Oftentimes, that can be a key indication of being distracted, whether it's you're in a relationship, whether it's you're involved in all these activities. But then if I ask you, well, what did, did God did God really lead you to do all of this? Where did, how did God tell you and speak to you to, to be involved in this or to be in this relationship? And you're like, oh, well, you know, I'm not really sure when God spoke to me or if he spoke to me about it. But I just, you know, it's an indication you're distracted. It, you know, when you have no clear leadership or direction from God about something, oftentimes it is a great indication that you yourself are distracted. Um, your thoughts are consumed by something and your time and your strength is consumed by that same thing as well, right? Whether it's, you know, your well-being, your future, those things are, you're being distracted. You know, your thoughts are, are just so consumed by it, even in your quiet time. Even when you want to sit down and eat lunch and eat breakfast, you're thinking about, you know, whatever that thing is. You're thinking about that person. You're thinking about how you're going to, you're going to, you know, pay your finances or whatever the case may be. It's an indication that something is distracting you, you know, um, Oftentimes, your conscience can even just testify to you that you're distracted. You, Every time you think about this thing, you just are so depressed and, you know, your conscience, you just, you have a bad feeling about it. It, it can be an indication that you're distracted. And uh, again, being in the wrong place in the wrong time can be a great indication. You know, when you're not where you're supposed to be, it can be an indication that you are, something is distracting you. When the people of God are gathering and you're you're not among them and you're you're doing something else, it can be a great indication that you're distracted. And one more I will share is when things that you are doing is just, it's not working out. You know, the works of your hands is being frustrated. It's not going well. You try and you try, but things are just, just falling out of, you know, falling out of place. It can be a great sign that you're being distracted because God himself is trying to get your attention, you know, by frustrating what you are doing. Another great example is Jonah. 
If you read Jonah chapter 1 to 2, you will see that Jonah was distracted. You know, he himself, God told him to go and preach to the left, and he went to the right, the very opposite direction. The Bible says that he fled from the presence of the Lord. And you see what happened. He was distracted. He took his focus off of what God was focusing on and went to go do something else. And so not only did disobedience manifest, right, we see a key indication of his distraction was that his disobedience, you know, which is sin. Again, I said a sign that you are distracted is sin is being produced out of what you are doing right or there is some sin associated with what you are doing it's a sign of you being distracted and we see that Jonah as he got on the boat with some other men that the, the the waves and the wind the storm began to just upset the boat and things were not going well and so that is also a sign of being distracted that things just begin to just fall out of place things are not you know there is just so much chaos that can be a sign that you are distracted and God is trying to get your attention amen and so tonight brethren I want to encourage us and um you know, let us know that tomorrow we will continue with this series because tomorrow we're going to talk about treatments. How do you deal with it when you find out that you are actually distracted, that something in your heart has been, you know, has taken the place of God, something in your heart has taken your focus off of what God has put your, your, your put his focus on, you know. Some of us may be distracted in our callings, you know. God has called you to be a preacher, but you yourself are doing arts and crafts. God didn't actually do arts and crafts. He asked you to go and preach the word, but you're distracted by something else. Though it's good, though arts and crafts is actually good, but he's, that's not what he asked you to do. You see, that's a distraction. And oftentimes when you are in that place, right, things will not go well. Your arts and crafts will not be going very well because you're supposed to be preaching, but you're doing arts and crafts or you're doing something else. Amen. Before we get off, we're definitely going to pray for those who here may be distracted. Amen. If you're here and you want to go ahead and just acknowledge that maybe something that was touched on tonight has distracted you. I want you to go ahead and just put a uh, and just, you know, put a thumbs up emoji. Just go ahead and put a thumbs up, thumbs up emoji. If you have been distracted or some, something that was touched on tonight is distracting you. You know, you found that maybe, you know, your worry and your anxiety for your well-being in the future, whether it's financially, how you're going to finish school. You know, you're so consumed by it that you just decided I'm going to drop all of my my leadership positions. I'm no longer going to serve God in church or serve God in the ministry because I have to figure out how I'm going to, you know, pay for this or do this. Or maybe there's a relationship. There's somebody in your life. You may not be in a relationship with them or you may be, but you yourself Every five minutes, you just you can't escape the, the thought of that person, even in your quiet time, even when you say for five minutes, I'm going to sit down and pray to God. Even while you're doing that five minutes, that person is just bombarding your mind. You know, um, you're spending countless hours of time with that person. You can't even you can't even quantify the amount of time that you spend with that person in one day. In fact, in one day, you spend more than a year with that person It's simply 24 hours. It's like you're spending an entire lifetime with that person and 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 people are confronting you and asking about it you may be distracted by that thing i want to pray for you those who acknowledge by the thumbs up emoji i want to just pray for you out there and i want you to also pray for yourself as i pray and say lord would you deliver me from this distraction would you deliver my heart because the bible says out of the heart flows the issues of life it says guard your heart because these distractions take our heart and our attention they take our affections off of god they began to mean more to us than God means to us. And so what we have to do is say, Lord, I want you to help me to surrender my heart back to you. I want you to help me restore my mind and my time and my attention back to you. Amen. I see those thumbs up. God bless you for acknowledging that. And, and, and your acknowledgement is before God and before God first and foremost. And so you acknowledging that you may be distracted by something. God himself is sending his Holy Spirit to even help you right now. Just receive it. In the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this, this series, oh God, that has, has began to help us and to prune our hearts, God, that we may be delivered from every distraction that is under the sun, God. Father, I know that there are so many distractions in this life that may have not even been touched on tonight, but Lord, I pray that you would deliver us all the same, God. If any person here, God, has opened their heart to receive deliverance, Lord, would you come in now, Lord, and touch their heart, God? Would you deliver their soul, God? The Bible says in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
Yes, Lord, anything that is buying and selling on the inside of us, causing us to want and to be distracted by from you, God. Lord, I pray that you would deliver us from that because you are the good shepherd. Lord, let your rod and your staff comfort us tonight, God, because tonight your word has come to convict, God. Your word has come to, Lord, illuminate, God, and, and shine on the dark areas of our lives, God, that we could easily be overthrown by if you did not reveal it to us, oh God. Father, I pray, restore our soul, oh God. Restore the souls of those, Lord, who are being consumed in their mind by distractions, God, by relationships with the opposite sex. Oh, God, Father, we just declare, oh, God, that you should release us from the bondages and the burdens, oh, God, that is taking away our freedom in you, our freedom to think the thoughts we want to think, our freedom, oh, God, to not worry about the finances of tomorrow, our freedom, oh, God, to not just be so busy that we can no longer serve you and miss out on the reward of serving God. Father, I pray in the name of your son, Jesus, help those even now. Send your Holy Spirit, oh God, to liberate their soul, to liberate their conscience, oh God, to liberate the hearts of those, Lord, who are just consumed by different ideas, God, and different things in life, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So, brethren, I want to... Uh, Thank all of you guys for joining us tonight for this brief Periscope series. Tomorrow at 11 p.m., we will continue on the same topic, distractions, and we're going to talk about treatments. How do you actually deal with being distracted by these different areas? You want to be a part of that. You don't want to miss it. It's a continuation of tomorrow's series. I want to encourage you before you get off the line today, I want to encourage you to go ahead and share this link again and share a testimony of how this has impacted you. Maybe a word that you have been encouraged by, something that you have learn tonight. I want to encourage you, go ahead and share it with your followers on Facebook, on Instagram, on social media. Share it with them and tell them what you have learned, what impacted you tonight, that they would also be encouraged and they will know to come here tomorrow to receive their encouragement, to receive their deliverance. Hallelujah. I want to let all of us know that this is BCF Bethel Campus Fellowship. Our vision is very clear. It's to lead students to Christ and to prepare them to become reliable men and women who will carry God's gospel for the next generation. So go ahead and share it. Share something that you have learned tonight. Share something that convicted you, that encouraged you, that you learned that you didn't know maybe. Share and test, share a testimony about this video so that others can know to call in tomorrow, to tune in tomorrow, and to be a part of it and to be blessed. Amen. So God bless you. Same time tomorrow, same place. We're talking about distractions and we're going to be talking about treatments and how to, 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 to really be delivered and to be set free from distractions that may be consuming you. Amen. God bless you all. Have a good night.